Hello everyone, good evening. So welcome again tonight in our Facebook Live on Thursday. Oh, it's 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here in California. So everybody, welcome to our Facebook Live tonight again. And I'm so excited to see all of you here. And I can see that some of our students are, are already uh, logged on. So thank you very much for sending us your message. So tonight I have prepared as usual. So we have our uh, delegation and our prioritization questions for tonight. Okay, and uh, one of the big biggest things that's going to happen tonight is that we're going to announce the winner for last week's uh, Facebook Live. So who will win tonight's um, uh, free 90-day uh, online NCLEX review? So we'll be announcing that person uh, before we end our program for tonight. Okay, so before anything else, uh, for some people who doesn't know me, um, my name is Mr. Alan Matus and I am a nurse educator. I have been teaching for more than, I guess, 25 years as a nurse educator teaching nursing students. And also I'm an author of a published book in Amazon, The Simple, Fast, and Easy NCLEX Review. And also um, I am the uh, president and founder of Matus Nursing Review. So thank you very much for being here tonight, everyone. And again, we'll be practicing some questions on delegation prioritization and knowing the principles uh, involved again in answering these types of questions okay so for tonight again we have four patients and then which patient are you going to see first okay and uh, for next week maybe we'll try other forms of uh, uh, question types in the NCLEX about these concepts everyone okay but before anything else okay i would like to welcome some students that we have for tonight so we have michelle hi michelle i know michelle is my student and i think she is uh in the middle east okay uh we also have carol edmonds uh, thank you very much for being here tonight okay and then also we have some new people here okay um yeah so we have um yeah michelle it's been a long time having joined the live due to busy schedule and that's okay all right, we, uh, we have this uh, Facebook Live in some of them in YouTube, okay? And then also we have uh, Bindo Jose, so a regular student here for tonight. So let's find some people for tonight. So we have Aldrin, uh, thanks for being here tonight, okay? And I guess that's it, okay? So uh, anyway, without further ado, uh, one of the biggest things that we have tonight again is going to be the free 90-day online, ac uh, online access and class review. So who, if you join our program for tonight, then you are automatically uh, listed or uh, part of the raffle that we have for winning this contest, okay? So thank you very much for being here tonight, everyone. Okay, so are you ready for our first question, everybody, for tonight? We're gonna have your first prioritization question, okay? So we're gonna have, all right, so number one, prioritization question, <laughs> okay? So we have the story of four clients again. So everybody get ready and then give me your answer because we have exciting questions for tonight. So four clients arrive at the emergency, in the emergency room, which client should the nurse see first? A, the 25 year old client who complains of abdominal pain and nausea after attending a buffet party. Let it be the 13-year-old client with asthma attack was wheezing stopped a few minutes ago. C, the 48-year-old client with ulcerative colitis who reports severe diarrhea with blood and mucus. And let it be the 58-year-old client with emphysema who complains of exertional dyspnea and dizziness. So what do you think is the answer to this question, everyone? Okay, so we have four patients which patient will be a priority in this question and i would like to find out uh, later on also what's your rationale for answering such uh you know the letters you know why you have chosen them okay so all right so we have different answers from different people okay so we have alan okay alan hill torres okay so that's Gianna burgos actually and she said that that's the answer okay so let's see, we have differences in, in answers, okay? Um, hmm. So the answer to this question, all right, everyone, you're still answering everybody, trying to find out what's the best answer to this question. All right, okay. Okay, so let's have the answer to this question, okay? 
you know the technique and the principle right okay so i know you have put your answer there everybody but remember that uh in answering these types of questions one of the things you have to really look at first is are the symptoms part of the condition <laughs> okay if they are not part of the condition and when you think they are serious then they become a priority it's an unstable patient okay is letter d an unstable patient you have to look at that okay are the symptoms part of the condition is she is the patient in distress is that unstable patient okay now uh, you have to decide which ones will be unstable then after that you prioritize your patient so who are the unstable patients and then you prioritize and then you decide airway breathing and circulation and then safety or neurological or even risk for infection okay so airway usually comes first right so the answer to this question is going to be letter all right drums rolling everyone the answer is going to be letter all right the answer is letter b everyone very good okay so letter b is the answer and the reason for that is because we know this is going back again to your core content in nursing our core content says that when wheezing stops in asthma it means that there is total airway obstruction it's severe exacerbation of asthma so it doesn't mean that when the wheezing stops that everything is okay you know uh, uh, especially if the wheezing suddenly stops and the patient is not progressing so for example you're looking at your patient and then this patient is not improving even though the wheezing stopped you know so meaning that patient is not doing very well so that's a priority letter b your asthma is a stable or unstable a is unstable okay remember that a is unstable however is that really the number one okay is letter d a uh, letter c unstable maybe a little bit because there's blood and mucus you know severe diarrhea but remember that part of the manifestations of ulcerative colitis is that they have diarrhea okay unless you have other symptoms included in letter c like uh, change in the level of consciousness so again you really have to look at the whole picture you know the clinical description of your patient what are the clinical descriptives or descriptions that uh, make the patient unstable letter d these are part of symptoms of emphysema to have exertional dyspnea and dizziness. But what if I say letter D? I put there, for example, with a pulse ox of 70%. Oh, that's a different story, you know, because a pulse ox of 70%, that means that it's an emergency for that patient. You know, it's uh, the patient is desaturating. Okay, so uh, letter B is a priority because the patient has asthma and the wheezing stopped, you know, a few minutes ago. Uh, okay, so that's really very important to remember and you want to see that patient first and find out what's going on with your patient in that situation. Okay, so good job everybody. I think most of you got the right answer to this question. Okay, so Marella, thank you very much for your uh, comment. Okay, so let's go to the second question everyone. Okay, so for the second question. But before anything else, I want to find out where is everybody coming from, you know, so especially for the new people over here, where are you coming from, everybody? Are you from California? Are you from the United States? And sad to say right now we have in California, we are going back to lockdown a little bit because of the whole coronavirus thing. So it's a little bit unfortunate. Okay, so um, but anyway, I would like to find out where you are, guys. Okay, so put that in the comment section okay so here is our second question everyone so audrey said that he is from the philippines okay very good okay so we have your second question so we have cheryl tate and she is from miami florida thank you very much cheryl okay all right so the second question is that we have is um the, the nurse receives the following clients after an end of shift report which client should be assessed immediately a the 67 year old post thyroidectomy client who complains of tingling in the toes and fingers b the 23 year old spinal cord injury client who reports that the foley catheter is leaking urine okay um we have also Letter C, okay, the 45-year-old client 
admitted for loose water stools and has a potassium level of 3.4 mill equivalents per liter. Larry G, the 48-year-old client with diabetes mellitus who reports increased urination in the last four hours. Okay, be very sure of your answers here, everyone. Okay, so which patient should come first? All right, is it A, B, C, or D? So which patient here is the most unstable or which one here is in a safety situation? Is there any airway issue going on over here? Okay, so first, again, the step, guys, is to really find out if the patient is stable or unstable. Find out if the symptoms are part of the condition, okay? Then after that, all of the unstable patients, you rank them together. So airway, breathing, and circulation, okay? All right, so let's proceed and answer the question every one, okay? So some of you answered letter B. Okay, so this goes back again to the concept. Whenever you're studying your nursing concept, you really have to know what are the concepts in nursing that are considered to be emergency. It all goes back to core content, knowing your emergencies. Okay, know your emergencies, everyone. Okay, so let's proceed and see this question. They suck this question, everyone. Okay, so um you have a b c and d uh letter d you have a diabetes patient who so has uh, increased urination so what's going on with that patient is something wrong with that patient okay now you will notice in this question that these patients actually are unstable these patients are in a situation that they're they're having a problem all of them four of them have problems however you have to make sure a b c you rank all of them together a b c uh, neuro and then also your safety okay safety so those are the uh, things that you need to remember neuro safety and also risk for infection so is there any airway issue among this patient who should come first you know so the answer to this question is going to be letter are you ready everyone so the answer is going to be letter letter a yes a is the answer now if you go back here b is a priority you know you really want to address that problem too you know the foley cap is leaking but you have to compare everything you know who is in um, in most uh, immediate danger so cheryl tate said that this one yes this is a very common concept you know after thyroidectomy what is the problem you know i discussed this in my lectures that one of the biggest problems after thyroidectomy is the accidental, the possible accidental removal of the parathyroid gland. And when the parathyroid gland is suddenly removed, you're going to have hypocalcemic crisis. Okay, write that down in your notes. Hypocalcemic crisis when the calcium level goes down. And then when the calcium level goes down, the patient undergoes into, uh, will experience signs of hypocalcemia, such as tingling in the toes and fingers, or numbness uh, in the lips, for example, and uh, also the famous, uh, you know, kivostic sign, and then the trusu sign, for example. And this is an emergency. You really have to give a uh, calcium gluconate immediately. Now, C is a priority as well. You know, uh, the person is having loose water stool. However, a potassium level of 3.4, the normal is 3.5, so 3.4 is still manageable. That's hypokalemia, but it doesn't really place the, the patient in danger right now, okay? Now, what about letter D, uh, someone with diabetes who's having increased urination? Uh, possibly there could be problem with a patient, like for example, diabetic ketoacidosis or something, you need to assess that patient, but that can wait a little bit, okay? The letter A is the person that needs immediate priority and then of course all of this goes back to your just your simply you know know your knowing your content everyone that's the most important thing okay so letter a is the answer very good everybody so low calcium very good so most of you got the answer right and do you know what this kind of concept you know the accidental parathyroid removal uh, after thyroidectomy this is a very common concept in the NCLEX and you really have to know this all right okay so now let's go to our questions, you know, your delegation questions. So I know you're excited, but I think uh, over the past few weeks, I've noticed most of you have been very good at uh, delegation questions. So, well, you know, in the NCLEX, uh, delegation questions can be easy as well. So let's see, you know, so. 
All right, so this is your delegation question, everyone. This is direct to the point, and I expect that most of you should be able to answer this correctly right away, all right? So the nurse is doing morning rounds when a client suddenly goes into cardiopulmonary arrest. Which task may be delegated to the unlicensed assistive personnel or UAP in this situation? A, check the client's level of consciousness. B, obtain the emergency crash cart. C, notify the rapid response team. Or D, obtain the vital signs. Okay, so what's the answer for this? The nurse is doing morning rounds when a client suddenly goes into cardiopulmonary arrest okay so which task may be delegated to the unlicensed assistive personnel in this situation okay the person goes into cardiopulmonary arrest okay to the UAP which one which one can you delegate to the UAP, everybody? All right. Remember, this patient is having cardiopulmonary arrest. Okay. So this patient is, is a very unstable patient. Okay. So what's going to be the answer, everyone? You have to choose the best answer. Do not get confused. Okay. So... The answer to this question, always remember, what are the three letter S's? Number one, it has to be a stable patient. Oh, it has to be within the scope of practice. It has to be a stable patient. And it has to be a simple routine procedure. So remember that. Don't forget your three letter S's when you are delegating to the UAP. So let's proceed. Some possibly are now changing their answers. Okay. So, the answer is going to be what? Okay. So, what are the three letter S's again, everyone? So, remember that. Simple routine. Very good, Alfred Aldrin. You said that. So, among all of this, which one is simple routine? The answer is going to be letter what? It's going to be letter. Okay. The answer to this question is going to be. All right. So, we'll have the answer now. Let me see. Okay. The answer to this question is going to be letter, okay, letter B, everyone. Obtain the emergency crash card. Very good, okay? So, why letter B? Okay, so it has to be letter B because you know why. Number one, checking the level of consciousness. That's for the registered nurse or the licensed nurse, okay? Because that's an assessment. You don't want to delegate assessment. It has to be simple routine procedure only. Now, letter C, notifying the rapid response team. Uh, maybe, but however, I don't think that in this situation, it has to be the UAP. Uh, letter D, obtaining vital signs. The question is, can UAPs, obtain vital signs yes but then remember in this situation do you really want the uap to be the one getting the vital sign this is an unstable patient who just had what a cardiopulmonary arrest okay uaps can get vital signs of stable patients all right but in this emergency situation it would be a good idea to actually delegate this to a registered or the registered nurse should be the one getting the vital signs instead or it has to be a licensed nurse okay so that's really so you have to compare between b and d which one really makes sense there will be because the crash card all you have to do is just get it and then uh, uh, pull it out and then just bring it to the station or to the patient's bedside and that's it yeah so letter b is something we can delegate to the uap do you agree with me everybody say yes in the comment section everyone okay very good some of you got it right congratulations okay thank you for that very good everybody so i hope you're learning tonight okay so let's have number four question everyone the last question for tonight okay so we have uh select all that apply which is your most favorite question in the nclex okay so the question is the registered nurse works with the unlicensed assistive personnel okay and licensed assistive personnel and the you and the uh, licensed practical nurse okay in the skilled nursing facility so which of the following tasks may be delegated to the lpn during admission of a client so which one can you delegate to the lpn 
during admission of the client? A. Prepare an unoccupied bed for the client. B. Explain to the client how to use the PCA pump. C. Draft the initial nursing care plan. D. Insert a Foley catheter. E. Check the color of your wound drainage. Or F. Place a water pitcher and cup at the bedside. Okay, so the RN is working together with the UAP and then the LPN in the skilled nursing facility. So which of the following tasks may be delegated to the LPN during admission of a client? So like all that apply. Okay, so is it A, prepare an unoccupied bed for the client, explaining how to use a PCA pump, C, draft the initial nursing care plan, insert a Foley catheter, check the color of wound drainage, or F, place a water pitcher and cup at the bedside okay so the answer will be what everyone okay so the answer to this question everybody will be okay the answer to this question is going to be let's see most of you have given your answer guys i'm going to give you the answer okay so I'm so excited. I think most of you got the correct answer for this question. Very good job. Okay. Very good. So the correct answer, everybody. All right, everyone. So the answer would be D and E. Congratulations, guys. Now, can you give me the rationale? Why is letter A not the answer? Can you put why is it not letter A? Okay. So Regine said that uh, Regine has a very good rationale here. She said that A is for the UAP. B is for the RN because that's your teaching. Very good. Letter C is for the RN, which is uh, the uh, care plan, especially during admission. And F, that would be for the UAP. Very good explanation. Okay. Uh, letter A and F, that would be for the UAP. Letter B will be for the RN, especially teaching. Okay. Uh, especially the PCA pump, which is um, an IV, you know, uh, intravenously, and the patient needs to use that. So let us see draft the initial nursing care plan that would be also for the RN. Okay, so can LPNs insert Foley catheters? Yes. Okay, can LPNs check the color of wound drainage? Yes or no? The answer is also what? Yes, the LPNs can check the color of wound drainage. In our previous discussion, we discussed this. LPNs can do focus assessment. An example of focus assessment or specific assessments will be checking the color of wound drainage, uh, getting vital signs also and they can also check your vowel sounds auscultate lung sounds as well so those specific assessments okay but comprehensive assessment that would be for the registered nurse okay so very good and no planning for the lpn as well okay all right so very good everyone congratulations thank you very much for being here tonight everyone we'll be announcing the winner of our last week's uh uh, uh what's this uh raffle okay so but before anything else i would just like to uh remind everyone about our program so our program we have the uh, online program which is matus nursing review online anklex academy and it's very complete innovative and interactive and we offer a lot of value to our students but as you can see in the picture our flood uh our uh, flagship uh product is our NCLEX success workbook and that's the one thing that I really offer to the students the NCLEX success workbook because um, uh, a lot of students have given feedback that they really like the, the information contained in that workbook okay and of course we have you world now as part of the package as well for our students so I'm so excited and so happy that uh, I have come up with the NCLEX success workbook and students are enjoying that and of course Everybody knows as well that I do have a book in Amazon, okay? The book in Amazon uh, is also available now in the Philippines. You just have to email that email out there, matusnursingreviewacademy at gmail.com, okay? So we have that. So in the Philippines, we can ship that also to you, everyone, okay? But I would like to find out also tonight, everyone, what is the number one thing that you learned? Did you learn something new tonight, everybody? okay i'm curious is there something new that you learned tonight or maybe uh, you appreciate the fact that you were able to uh, uh, re uh, apply the uh, principles again for tonight as a practice okay so these sessions are not really very long because i know you're re really very busy but thank you for being here and at least learning something okay and you can re-watch this uh 
Facebook Live, you know, and also share this with your friends as well, everybody. I would be very happy to see that your other friends are also benefiting from this. So please, okay? So let's announce now, okay? So we have Menchi. Thank you very much, Menchi, for the appreciation. Thank you, Sir Allen. God bless you for sharing your knowledge to us. Thank you very much, okay? So let's proceed and... Um, Yes, Michelle um, is already included in the package, okay? When students enroll in the program, okay, we have that package. So thank you very much. Are you ready, everyone, to find out who won in our, uh, who won our raffle contest last week? Okay, let's find out, okay? So who, who won the raffle last week, okay? So all of this uh, Facebook Live that we have, uh, we actually put this in the online academy. Uh, when you enroll, you have access to all of the videos for all previous sessions, okay? So, now let's proceed and announce our winner for tonight. Okay, so, I thought Shoko Pascual said that her sister passed the exam. So, I didn't know which sister is that, but uh, thank you very much. And MJ learned a lot. Thank you very much. So, I ordered the book already. Just waiting to arrive on Sunday. You did? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, MJ. Okay, so yes, so we have a class on Saturday. Our class will be on Saturday. That would be July 18 for the live and class review webinar. It's 10 days. It's from July 18 to September 26, and that comes with a workbook as well. So I'll be meeting the students online. There'll be 8 to 3 p.m. every Saturday. So guys, thank you very much for enrolling. I'll see all of you on Saturday. Okay, so now. Let's proceed. Okay. All right. And uh, also regarding the U World, if you do have questions, the U World is is uh, is packaged. You know, you have to go back to the pricing list again and find out which package you you purchase comes with the U World because not all package comes with the U World. You have to look at the every item which one contains you wrote, okay? Because there's different pricing also for those uh, who ordered uh, just the workbook and also the you world, okay? All right, so the you world subscription is 90 days, everybody. It's 90 days, all right? And it comes as a package. It is not separate from the program. Please go to the Facebook page. Uh, go to the Facebook page, everyone. We have right now the first post you will see in our Facebook page are all the price listings. So please go there. And I could share that as well in the comment section, you know, to see uh, what package contains the U World. And if you purchase the program and you don't have U World, what we can do is that we can cancel your purchase and then you can purchase the one with the U World, everyone. Okay. I just really want to clarify that because it's not automatic that all of the programs have U World. It depends on the package that you will get. Okay. All right. But our winner for tonight, everybody, is going to be. Congratulations to Audrey Sullivan. So Audrey, congratulations for winning our, uh, our uh, on 390 day online access review. Okay, so congratulations Audrey. So send us an email, okay? Send us an email and then we will enroll you to the 90 day program, okay? And part of our condition for, here, for this one also is that you cannot win twice. You have to finish the whole 90 days first and then you can join the raffle again. So, Freddy, congratulations. I uh, know not Freddy, but Audrey. Audrey has always been joining us in this, um, in this, uh, um, you know, uh, in this uh, uh, Facebook Live. All right. So, congratulations, uh, Audrey. All right for for winning uh, tonight. Okay. So, guys, thank you very much again. I appreciate you being here. And at the end of the day, I just really want to serve the students. Um, and at the same time, really want to make sure that I give them the best information. Okay, the best information to learn and to make everything simple, fast, and easy. But I do encourage students to use our resources and other resources as well, you know, and find out which resources will help you a lot in make, in passing the NCLEX. And always remember the NCLEX is just out there. Okay, and sometimes students feel so pressured. They really need to pass the NCLEX. You know, when you feel so pressured to pass the NCLEX, you don't, uh, that affects your performance in the actual NCLEX exam. So what I want you to do, and my advice is that, just um, study, enjoy the learning process, and uh, hope for the best, you know, but then um, always remember that um, uh, the NCLEX is an examination. So um, 
uh, at the end of the day, uh, just do your best and uh, hope for the best outcome. All right. But don't feel too much pressure as if your world is going to crumble down. If you don't pass, you know, uh, the opportunity is always there. Okay. So always remember that. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. And I hope, uh, I hope you have a good uh, weekend. Thank you. And I'll see you again next week. And congratulations to Audrey Sullivan again from the Philippines.